Hello and welcome to Connecting Hawaii Business on Think Tech Hawaii. My name is Kathleen Lee and I am your host for this program. Today's episode is going to be a special one and it's slightly bittersweet. So I have been doing this show since 2020 and this is my first time doing a solo show. But this is also our last episode for Connecting Hawaii Business and I am humbled and grateful to have had the opportunity to feature community and business leaders, some of them being my friends, to talk about how they run their business, how they want to make a difference and collaborate with other individuals and organizations, and lastly, to make Hawaii a better place. So it has been a great experience, and today's show is going to be a highlight of some of my favorite interviews. So for the First clip that we have, uh, I interviewed Eddie Ekek Kili'i Nohomoku, who is the owner of Go Hawaii Tours. And he, in that episode, talked about starting a business. So let's go to that clip. If you're going to build a business, right, don't create a job for yourself. What you really want to do is you want to you want to basically work on it, not in it, right? So if you're really good at making cakes and you start a cake business, but you're just making cakes all day, you're not really truly creating a business. Uh, you're creating a job, right? So a lot of people forget the whole goal is, is you know, to start with the end in mind. You're going to start a business. You, you got to know where you want to be. And that business has to operate like its own living and breathing organism without you, right? And that's, like truly where, you know, uh, the business becomes its own uh, entity outside of yourself. So you have, you know, no effect on, you know, whether it's, it's growing or any of that. It just happens naturally. The great part about reviewing these clips is I get to see not only my evolution as a, an interviewer and a citizen journalist, but also the evolution of my hair. So that was a great reminder of how long I grew it when I first interviewed Eddie. And that interview also reminded me of the difference between creating a business and creating a job, two different things. So very thankful to Eddie Eke Kili'i Nohomoku for coming on the program. Again, there have been a wide, there's been a wide variety of individuals and organizations that I've had the pleasure of interviewing. Um, I had the owners of Maui Chili Chili Oil, who are also my friends, Darren and Kit Furukawa, come on the show to talk about what it's like working in a business with your significant other, especially if you two are married. So let's take a look at that clip. We have really good communication. Uh, we sometimes, sometimes maybe we don't see eye to eye, but you know, we always come to, uh, I guess, an agreement or like a compromise in doing things. Um, I always think I'm right, and I'm never always right. And Kit is most of the time always right, so I have to give her grief until I realize, oh, she's right. Okay, let's do it your way then. But that's just the kind of the relationship that we have. Uh, it sounds like we're fighting all the time and we're not. We're just, you know, kind of trying to be the boss and, you know, we all know who the boss is. <laughs> <laughs> I think it helps, um, you know, for a, for a startup or, you know, if you have a partner to bounce ideas uh, with. I love that interview because, again, Kit and Darren are friends and they're also very involved in the community in Maui. So congratulations to them and their endeavors. Since that show aired, Maui Chili Chili Oil has been on shelves in local grocery stores. Um, and again, congratulations to their success. While we're on the kind of the wavelength of couples working with each other, I had the opportunity to interview my friends Lelaine Ignau and Eric Gunding. They are the owners, founders, of Sama Sama, which is a, um, it's Filipino inspired boba. So they also have, they now have a, like a brick and mortar location over at Leeward Community College. So let's take a look at them talking about their business. And the food aspect, drink aspect, that's what we want to 
be able to showcase to people, you know, like, this is my culture. This is something I need, I should be proud of. And like, this is something that can be seen. And we want to be able to showcase to like Filipino, Filipino cuisine is always going to be here to stay, no matter what. And, you know, it's, it's finally time for us to showcase to the entire world that Filipinos are here. Um, what about you, Elaine? I have to agree with Eric. I think for me, it was definitely just trying to put ourselves on the map and provide representation for our Filipino culture, especially through our food, because not everyone knows what Filipino food is all about. Not everyone attracted um, or craved Filipino food on a regular basis. So I really wanted us to change that and fully introduce it through boba and eventually through dessert and food. What I appreciate about their business is that they are representing what I believe is still an underrepresented um, culture in the food and beverage sector, which is um, the the Filipino American culture. And as a Filipino American myself, it was great to, and it is still great to see them out there um, growing sama sama and introducing them not only to Hawaii but to uh, the community beyond that. So thank you, Lelaine and Eric for being on the show. Um, up next, we have Chantel Perry, who came up with Mother Preppa to match her personality of being really assertive and, you know, like really on the go. So Chantel, again, started a meal prepping company and let's watch her clip. So Chantel, how do you come up with your menus and do you customize them for clients? I do. Well, I our most popular menu um, is the low carb menu. Like I said, I honestly make things that I would want to eat. I don't serve anything that I'm not going to eat. And what I like, to, I grew up in the kitchen with my mom. My mom is the best cook, the best. So what I do is I take her recipes and then I tweak it. So I take out the sugar, the carbs, and it's kind of like a science experiment. So I take out what I can and try not to sacrifice too much texture and taste. Um, I do a lot of local and Asian dishes. Um, that's for the low carb menu. And every week we just come up with something new. Meal prepping is actually a great way to save time. So when she got on the show, I appreciated how she reminded me of the importance of one, being prepped, and, and two, being efficient when it comes to feeding yourself. So she had mentioned during the show, which I hope you can catch, that a lot of her clients are, you know, busy individuals, especially folks that work in healthcare. So that was one example of the people that she caters to with Mother Prepper. Along with business owners, I mentioned earlier that I had the opportunity to also interview some of our local legislators. So I had my friend Representative Darius Keela on the show to talk about uh, working like the government and businesses working together. How do you think government and businesses can work, not necessarily perfectly, but harmoniously together to help me? Well, knowing that sometimes government can do things that businesses can't and knowing that businesses sometimes fill the void of government, looking to find those two parties to work succinctly and not necessarily against each other. I, I, I always think firsthand about mixed-use development that exists in Kapolei, where they have almost a, a perfect model for live, work, play, and finding that these different groups don't necessarily have to work against each other, but can work together. Because if in a perfect world, I'd love to keep the workforce that comes out of the Leeward Coast on the Leeward Coast, because the track to get to work is sometimes another journey in itself. And somewhat creating these pockets of economic development in some way is the best, best platform to support our Hawaii residents. I think that here in Hawaii, we have to remember that we're all so intrinsically connected. It is a, it's a large place, but it's also a small place. And for government and businesses to work with each other is very important for uh, the success of our state. So I appreciated Representative Darius Kila for talking about that when he was on the program. 
We also had Dr. Suma Metla, who founded Three Little Ducks Hawaii, which caters to kids, little kids, and, and the parents who have them. So let's take a look. I want people to know that Three Little Ducks is a really approachable community. Not only is the class for parents and families to learn about the child development, but it's really to build that community. I think when families have a new baby in their life, it can be isolating, it can be lonely, um, especially if you're from the mainland or if you recently PCS to Hawaii, it can be scary having your baby at home by yourself. So Three Little Ducks is another way to build that social community with other families who are in that same phase of life, um, going through the same you know, highs and lows of having a, a baby at home. Um, and it's a great place just to share, not just to hear from me or the other experts that teach the class, but to hear from families and they have all their own tips and tricks. Recently, we had a class where the mom sat and chatted about baby carriers and it was amazing and beautiful to see that happen. I really wish I had done this earlier since it, it's been fun going through all these episodes and I... I, I wish I had placed more, but again, I, I'm doing highlights and I'm glad to have been able to interview all these amazing individuals and leaders. Um, up next, we have my friend Gina Sequenia, who is the executive director of the Hawaii Building and Construction Trades Council. So I actually met Gino when I was doing a story on him for the Phil Am Courier. And at that time, he had just started a foundation and his golf tournament um, in the name or under the name of his father to provide for um, underserved communities and opportunities for people to take up golf and other sports. Yeah, I had asked him about how to blend business and community involvement. And as always, his response was very insightful. For people who are watching or listening to this, um, what would you like to tell them in regards to combining both what you do for a living and community involvement? What is one message or one lesson that you would like to share? Uh, well, for somebody who wants. Be Gina. <laughs> Someone wants to be Gina. Yeah. Relationship. That's my one word. Really, I value my relationships. I have great relationships with a lot of people. You gotta have integrity. When you when you say something, you're gonna do something. You live. You do the right thing. Even though when nobody's looking, right, and as having integrity, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, then. All that you meet, I say three things, right? Uh, you uh, establish the relationship, you build on the relationship, and the last is you strength. I always see that place that when I know me most, that lesson. So, uh, I don't know. Then you have re re relationships, you know, ensures that I have a seat at the table. Uh, Part of the discussion and the decision making just open a lot of doors. You know, I get asked to be boards and I, I honor to accept to be on it. And yeah, that's the secret. I laugh because I, again, I know Gino. Gino is a friend and he is part of a multitude of boards, and every single one that he joins is something. Uh, supports a cause that he's very passionate about. So I, I greatly look up to him and I'm glad to have been able to feature him and talk to him on the show to share his secrets of how to be Gino. I also most recently, in the last few months, I had my friend Jaina Abarzua, who is the owner and founder of Sea Glass Mental Health. And she talks about her business. As someone who is running a practice both in Arizona and Hawaii, is that correct? That's awesome. What are some lessons that you've learned that you would like to share with individuals or entrepreneurs who may want to go the same route that you have? Oh, that's a great question. Um, never give up. <laughs> that's a big one. Um, 
I, I think a lesson to be learned too is, you know, being able to believe in yourself, which sounds so cheesy, but I never saw myself as being a, a business owner or practice owner. And I studied psychology for six years in school. I've never taken one business class. Um, but just believing in yourself that if you want to achieve something, um, you can make it happen. It's going to take a lot of work. Um, but in existential philosophy, they have this saying that if you can figure out your why, you can figure out almost any how. So if you have your why, why am I building this practice, this business? Why am I doing this? The how will fall into place. But you have to have a really strong why. Um, because it's it's tough, you know, it's not easy, it's not always fun, and it's not always what you see, you know, in, in movies or documentaries or on podcasts. There's some really hard and long days, but if you're able to, you know, ground yourself in that why, um, the challenges just become part of the journey and you can start to appreciate the challenges and learn from them. One of the many things that I love about the individuals that I interviewed was finding out why they do what they do, especially since these are leaders, these are entrepreneurs, um, people who have not like started from scratch or taken whatever experience they've had and decided to run with it and start their own thing. And it every single interview for me was a great reminder of like taking a step and being courageous to start your own business. So I'll, I'll always say this with every single <laughs> segment that we go through. Oh, well, I only have one left, but I'm I'm grateful, absolutely grateful for having cross paths with these people and still having them in my life. I saved this one for last because I talked about, um, or I asked Michelle Carmack, who is the founder of Oak and Pine about fear. How would one tackle fear of starting, especially when it comes to new endeavors or new business? Um, what's funny is fear doesn't go away. It, it's always there and it's always at the same level, it seems, but you learn how to kind of work through it. You know, you speak with these great, um, when you have conversations with people who are on stage pretty often, you ask them, like, how did you get over the fear of public speaking? They say, I don't, I just learn how to process it better. So it's the same thing with entrepreneurship. It's like right before you get on stage, the butterfly feeling of, should I run away? Should I make an excuse that, you know, I don't feel well? Like, what, what do I need to do to get out of the situation? I think whenever you feel that emotion, find the tools that allow you to break through it. So as an entrepreneur, what's your ritual? You know, if you're feeling overwhelmed with the day-to-day, -day, what can you do every single day so that you can get out of the emotional state and really into the action? Like, what what do I need to do? What is my next step? So, so yeah, I would say to process fear, explore different options, right? It could be journaling. It could be Maybe you have a wellness practice, like you go to sound healing once a week or you do something that grounds you. I like to walk my dog in the morning and leave my phone in the car and not like just stay completely disconnected. And I watch my dog, you know, walk around and have fun, so on and so forth. So for me, that's kind of how I ground myself. Um, and I, I would encourage everyone else to do the same. Just find something that you can do as a ritual to get you in that mindset regularly. Michelle actually came on my show um, twice. So the first time before that one clip that we just watched was, as she mentioned, her first interview. And I was greatly honored to have been that person to be able to highlight her and showcase what she, um, what her business is about. And since then, she has expanded. They do have a brick and mortar location. Um, she's also in event planning now, so I'm I'm glad that she is thriving, and I'm glad to call her a friend. With that being said, I it has been a pleasure um, being a host for Connecting Hawaii Business for these last, I think maybe four years. I will always be grateful to Jay Fidel and Karen Wan Lee and everyone on the staff. This is how I usually end the show. I'll thank Jay and Carol and Mike and Haley, who have been helping me out. But, but 
I and I always feel like gratitude is the best way to connect with people just so we know that or they know that they are appreciated and it reminds them of their why. So again, from the bottom of my heart, I thank you for watching my show for the, these last four years. And I really wish everyone um, the best. I, I'm i unsure where this is going to go as far as like think tech goes. But I, again, I'm, I'm glad that I had the opportunity to do this and have all these interviews archived for these individuals and for the community to learn from. So again, mahalo from the bottom of my heart and aloha. We want to announce that ThinkTech Hawaii is moving into a new phase and will not be producing regular talk shows after April 30th. We will retain our website and YouTube channel and will accept new content on an ad hoc basis. We are also developing a legacy archive program to provide continuing public access to our content. If you can help us cover the costs of the transition and the development of our legacy archive program, please make a donation on thinktechaway.com. Thanks so much. Aloha.